Hi, and welcome to 2.6b, Kinematic Equations 2. In this lesson, students will be able to use kinematic equations to calculate the physical quantities associated with and fully describe the motion of objects. Uh, basically, we're still doing, we're solving for a displacement, initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, and time, but we're going to introduce yet another equation that we can use to find uh, those variables. So let's derive a useful equation. It says, for example, let's say we know the initial velocity. So we know VI hypothetically, and hypothetically we know the time and the acceleration. So those are all knowns, that's good. Uh, even though we don't have the final velocity, we should still be able to find the distance traveled. So we're looking for the distance and we don't care about the final velocity. Now we're gonna derive an equation that doesn't have VF in it. Let's get rid of VF and let's combine these two equations. Uh, D is equal to one half VF plus VI times T, the secret formula that's not given to you, but you could write it on your reference table. And the acceleration formula, but we rearranged it yesterday, VF equals VI plus AT. So if we wanted to get rid of VF, then all we have to do is substitute in what we know vf is equal to this so if vf is equal to that let's plug it in over here and then instead of a vf term we'll have this which there's no vf there and there's no vf in the rest of the problem so we'll have an equation that doesn't have vf in it so that's kind of the game plan Let's start by doing just that. I'm going to substitute in here and just see what we get. So we get D is equal to one half parentheses. And then instead of VF, I'm going to write VI plus AT. That's equal to VF. And then we have to continue. So that's plus VI and parentheses times T. So I just plugged in this is equal to VF. Okay, but we're rewriting it like that so that we have technically this is we're done. Like this is an equation that we can use in that scenario that I just put in because there's no VF there, but look how crazy this is. There's two separate T terms and two separate VI terms. We can definitely simplify this and um, kind of make it look neater. So we could say that D is equal to one half and then combine the terms. This is one VI plus one VI. So let's call that two VI and then just keep writing plus AT and parentheses T. Now we have some distributing to do. We have to distribute the half and then we'll distribute the time. But for now, let's just do D is equal to, okay, what's one half of two? Well, it's just one. And what's one times VI? Uh, VI plus one half times A times T. Now that's still in parentheses and being multiplied by T. So now we have to distribute T just so that we can like kind of make this look nicer. And then we have VI times T plus one half times A times T times T. So T times T is T squared. And that is the formula that we're gonna use today. D equals VIT plus one half AT squared. Kind of rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Maybe not. So where is this equation? I hope they give this one to you at least. Let's see, is it on the back? Yes, it is. So now we have an equation that doesn't have VF. This one doesn't have VF in it, so it's useful if we don't care about VF. Uh, this equation doesn't have D in it, so that's useful if we don't have D. And then the secret equation, VF plus VI, what, what doesn't the secret equation have? Take a look, see if you can figure it out. Acceleration, if you don't have the acceleration and they're not looking for the acceleration, use this one. If you don't have the displacement and then they're not, they're not asking for it, use this one. And if they don't have the final velocity and you're not looking for it, use that one. That's kind of, that's how I like to do, uh, like to find which equation to use. Cause now we have so many different equations to choose from. And if we're stuck with a word problem and we're not sure which one to do to use, that's kind of a good technique. And then spoiler alert, tomorrow we're gonna learn that one. So this will be like your full gambit of tools in your tool belt for these kinematic equations. So here's an example. 
The Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird is a long-range Mach 3 Plus strategic reconnaissance aircraft. It has held the world record for the fastest air-breathing manned aircraft since 1976. Its top speed is 2,193.2 miles per hour, or 980 meters per second, which is approximately Mach 3.3. And that Mach thing, in case you don't know, Mach 1 is the speed of sound. Mach 2 is two times the speed of sound. So this thing goes 3.3 times the speed of sound. And 980 meters every second, 100 meters is about 100 yards. So 100 meters is like one football field. 980 meters is 9.8, almost 10 football fields in one second. Almost 10 football fields in one second. That's how fast this thing goes. And it's uh, piloted by humans. So imagine going that fast. That must be nuts. All right, so let's do the problem. It's kind of fun, I guess. All right, so it's, uh, oh, I didn't finish reading it. I just got so excited. It decelerates for 20 seconds at a rate of negative 20 meters per second squared because you have a positive velocity and a negative acceleration you know you're slowing down how far does it travel during this time we'll write our initial velocity as that positive let's use the meters per second version because they told us the acceleration in meters per second so we want to make sure our units agree and then the time it says it's undergoing this deceleration for 20 seconds now what are they looking for how far does it travel that's the displacement. That's what they're looking for. So I write that down as well so that I could take a look and see, hmm, which variable isn't there? The VF is not there. So I've, I kind of go like that. And I'm like, okay, let me find an equation that doesn't have VF in it. And you look at your reference table like we did before, and you could kind of go through the equations. And if you see a VF in the equation, you know you can't use it. So that's kind of like an easier way to pick out which equation you should use. Instead of looking for the one that has four variables, you look for the one, you're looking for one variable. Anyway, that's my spiel about that. You're gonna, on this practice assignment, there's a lot of different equations now. So it helps to have a good technique and like a good method for how to find which equation to use, which we'll do now, and I wrote it wrong. D is equal to VIT plus one half A times T squared. So we're looking for the displacement, VI is 980, the time is 20 seconds, and I know somebody was going to say it. You don't have to tell me. I know I made a mistake. 20 seconds, all right? Plus one-half times A is negative 20 meters per second squared, and then the time is 20 uh, seconds. Well, I got. I was thinking about units and what I was going to say next about units, so that's why I wrote the units there. If, as long as you write them on the side... Uh, you don't have to write them in the problem. So when you, all you have to do now is some multiplication, add two numbers together. Don't forget the negative sign. You have to include that. And you wind up getting 19,400 meters in 20 seconds. That's like 19.4 kilometers in only 20 seconds. So I like to do a check. And if I see a big number like that, I'm like, hmm, does that make sense? Well, we're talking about a super fast plane here. So in this case, it, it does make sense. That is the correct answer. Okay. Actually, I made a mistake here. Did you catch it? I forgot to square the time. Oh man. So this will make this a little bit less. Still a pretty far distance for only 20 seconds. You end up getting 1,920 meters and that turns into only 1.92 kilometers, which is like a far distance for 20 minutes, 20 seconds. Can you run 1.92 kilometers in 20 seconds? I don't think so. So the world record distance for a paper airplane throw is 69.14 meters. If it's in the air for 10 seconds and decelerates at a rate of negative 2.5 meters per second squared, what is its initial velocity? And by the way, I got these numbers by looking at this YouTube video. Uh, I'll post this YouTube video in our extension folder. And I forgot to mention, I, I'll also post something about that SR-71 Blackbird um, plane. There's like another little fun link in there if you're interested in learning more about that. Um, 
So let's do the problem. It says the it's thrown, so the distance is 69.14 meters. It's in the air for 10 seconds, and it decelerates at a rate of negative 2.5 meters per second squared. What is its initial velocity? And again, I'm telling you, the process works. Look at your variables, identify which one isn't listed, find an equation that doesn't have VF in it. If you look at an equation and you see VF, cross it off. You're not going to use it. Maybe not cross it off if that's your only reference table, but you know what I mean. So here's the equation. Here's the substitution. And now we could just solve for VI. So 69.14 is equal to 10 times your variable VI. And then that's going to become minus 125 when you do that multiplication. So you add 125 to both sides and then divide by 10. And you get an initial velocity of 19.414 uh, meters per second. So that guy had to chuck the airplane at 19.4 meters per second in order to go that far. And that's about it. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Don't forget to do the guess method on your practice worksheet. I want to see all the givens and the unknowns listed, and then you write the equation, and then you substitute in, and then you can solve. And don't forget to also write your units in the given information and in the final answer. Start building good habits now. Have a great day.